The leaf is the main organ for photosynthesis. It has specific features that enhance the process of photosynthesis. Now we look at these features and how they enable the leaf as an organ to carry out photosynthesis efficiently. We first start by looking at the external features. Now for our purpose, we look at a uh, dicotyledonous leaf. But whatever features that are present and true for dicotyledonous leaf are also present and true for a monocotyledonous leaf. Now if you look at the external features, overleaf there are those characteristics that enhance the process of photosynthesis the first one is the color most plants have green leaves the greenness is due to the presence of the pigment chlorophyll chlorophyll enables the plant to trap light energy which is then used in the process of photosynthesis. The lamina of the leaf is quite thin. Most plants have thin lamina. This is to reduce the distance that light penetrates in order to get to the photosynthetic tissues. It also reduces the distance that carbon four oxide from the atmosphere must diffuse to get to the photosynthetic tissues. The leaf blade is also broad. This is to provide a large surface area for absorption of light and carbon four oxide. There is the petiole which provides support by attaching the leaf to the stem. And the attachment of the petiole to the stem is such that it is at an angle. It supports the leaf, that is a leaf, at an angle for maximum light absorption that is so that the leaf is exposed in such a way that maximum area for light absorption is affected so the petrol supports the leaf in the best possible angle for maximum sunlight absorption there are veins and the midrib the midrib and the branching from the midrib are the veins. If this was a monocotyledonous leaf, then there will be no branching from the midrib. Instead, there will be many ribs that are parallel to the one at the center that's making the parallel venation that is characteristic of the monocotyledonous leaves. But in this particular case, you have the mid midrib and the veins. This one provide support so that the leaf is exposed to maximum light absorption. Secondly, the midrib and the vein do contain vascular tissues that conduct water from the roots to the leaves and carry away the products of photosynthesis from the leaf to the other parts of the plant. So externally, those are some of the features that adapt the leaf to uh, the process of photosynthesis. Now internally, the leaf has the following features, adaptive features for photosynthesis. One, the cuticle. Most terrestrial plants have a cuticle. This can be on the upper and also lower surface or just on the upper surface only. The cuticle 
is transparent, it is non-cellular, waxy and waterproof. The transparency allows for the penetration of light to the photosynthetic tissues beneath. So light can penetrate through the transparent cuticle to get to the photosynthetic tissues. Being waxy and waterproof, it also reduces excessive loss of water by evaporation. And also being a non-cellular, it protects the underlying tissues from mechanical damage and infection. Then the outermost tissue covering the leaf is the epidermis. There is the upper epidermis and the lower epidermis. The epidermal cells lack chloroplast, hence they are also transparent to allow light through to the photosynthetic tissues. In some regions, the epidermal cells are modified into guard cells. They are modified into guard cells. So, like here on the lower epidermis, you have these guard cells. It's a guard cell. It's another guard cell. Now, these guard cells control an opening. There is a pore between them, the stoma. That is the stoma. So, the guard cells control the opening and closing of this stoma through which carbon four oxide enters the leaf to be used in photosynthesis. These guard cells also have chloroplasts in them, hence they are also photosynthetic. It is through these stomata on the epidermis that uh, carbon four oxide from the atmosphere diffuses into, so carbon four oxide from the atmosphere diffuses into the leaf while oxygen, that is a product of photosynthesis, diffuses out of the leaf. In most plants, the stomata are mainly located on the lower epidermis in order to minimize water loss. So you'll have most of the stomata on the lower epidermis, though also quite a number of plants there are just as many stomata on the upper epidermis as there are low it all depends on the environmental condition and how the plant is adapted to survive in its natural habitat another internal adaptive feature of the leaf is the mesophyll tissue now there are two types of mesophyll palisade mesophyll beneath the upper epidermis and the spongy mesophyll below the palisade mesophyll. The palisade mesophyll consists of cells that are packed with numerous storm, uh, chloro, uh, chlorophyll, uh, chloroplasts. Sorry. They have numerous chloroplasts in them. So this green body, these ones, these are the chloroplasts. The chloroplasts contain chlorophyll molecules which absorb light energy that is used in photosynthesis. These palisade cells are located beneath the upper epidermis in order to receive maximum sunlight. So their location here ensures that they receive maximum sunlight. The cells are arranged such that their long axes are perpendicular. So this, can we see the orientation of the cells? This is their long axis. This is the long axis. It is perpendicular to the surface of this leaf. So that is the surface of the leaf. And the long axis of the cell is perpendicular to the leaf surface so that it can receive maximum light. So light will have to cross through 
a very long portion a very long portion or part of the cell and in the process most of this light would be absorbed if it was not for this arrangement if it was not for this orientation such that the long axis is perpendicular to the surface then this will be the arrangement and light will be crossing through a relatively smaller volume or area of the leaf thus less light will be absorbed but with this arrangement whereby the long axis is perpendicular to the surface then this ensures that there is maximum light absorption another adaptive feature of the pellicid mesophyll is that the cells are tightly packed so as to trap most of the incoming light in some plants the palisade mesophyll consists of several layers of cell in order to enhance light absorption especially those plants that grow in areas that have minimum or very little light like on the floor of forests or underwater such plants will have several layers of palisade mesophyll in order to enhance absorption of light then beneath the palisade mesophyll there is a spongy mesophyll the spongy mesophyll consists of cells that are irregularly shaped and are loosely arranged thus creating air spaces between them these air spaces promote diffusion of gases through the leaf it, it enhances the diffusion of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the leaf and also the diffusion of oxygen produced from photosynthesis out of the leaf these large spaces also expose large surface area these large surface area are exposed for gaseous exchange so generally the air spaces increase the surface area for gases exchange within the leaf now the spongy mesophyll cells also do have chloroplasts but they're not as numerous as in the palisade cells within the leaf we also have the vascular bundle the vascular bundle consists of xylem and phloem tissues the xylem conducts water and mineral salts from the roots to the leaf where they are used in photosynthesis while the phloem conducts products of photosynthesis such as sugar away from the leaf to the rest of the plant so these are the adaptive features of the leaf and each feature ensures or plays a role in the process of photosynthesis so most leaves have these adaptive features in them to enhance the process of photosynthesis